Ramillies was the first Revenge-class battleship to be laid down, but it was the last to be completed. This was due in part to further appreciation of underwater threats coming about while she was under construction, and partially because since the five ships of the class were being built in five different yards, by the time the official counter, anti-torpedo bulges, had been decided upon, Ramillies had yet to be built up to a stage where incorporating these changes into the hull would have been overly expensive, and so as a relatively cheap and easy solution compared to the other shipyard's vessels which were more progressed, she was selected to have these incorporated, and this extended the already slow build time. Thus, the ship would miss Jutland completely, although she would have her own excitement when her launch in 1916 went a little bit wrong, with the hull hitting the slipway instead of sliding down it, which left her damaged enough to need temporary repairs and then towing to a dry dock to effect more extensive repairs, bear in mind she hadn't even been completed at this point, and as a result it wouldn't be until autumn 1917 that she entered service with a Grand Fleet albeit that her performance once she was with the Grand Fleet was good enough to cause the installation of further anti-torpedo bulges on other capital ships in the fleet, as it turned out they didn't actually slow the ship down all that much. During the interwar period, the Revenge and Queen Elizabeth classes tended to be operated as five ship units, with one normally in the Atlantic fleet and one in the Mediterranean fleet. The two squadrons would occasionally swap roles and, even more rarely, combine. It would be in the latter theatre, the Med, that Ramillies first fired her guns in anger, in a series of efforts aimed at thwarting the Turkish nationalists, first trying to prevent them from toppling the Sultan, and when that didn't work, supporting the Greek nationalists in their attempts to carve bits off of what had formerly been the Ottoman Empire. This effort also didn't work out particularly successfully. Exercises, peacekeeping in the Mediterranean, and forays into the Atlantic were the ship's bread and butter for the rest of the interwar period along with two major refits, one in 1926-27 and the other in 1933-34, which would significantly change her profile and capabilities. Along with a number of smaller refits, she would enter World War II with expanded anti-torpedo bulges, a reduced 6-inch secondary battery, four twin 4-inch anti-aircraft guns in a heavy anti-aircraft battery, plus 40mm pom-poms, quad 50 cal Vickers machine guns, and no more torpedo tubes, as they'd been removed to save weight. During the war, more pom-poms would be added, along with a variety of radars and, of course, many 20mm orlicans, in turn sacrificing some more of the 6-inch battery to free up space and weight. But there would be no extensive upgrade of her heavy anti-aircraft guns, and she was given superchargers for her main battery to extend their range and hitting power in lieu of increased elevation to the guns. As part of the Revenge class, Ramillies' opening duties were very much second line, mostly running convoy escorts. But with the Allies losing France and the Axis gaining Italy, she was launched into a much more frontline role for a while, participating in attacks on Italian frontline ports in North Africa, as well as the more dangerous Mediterranean convoy runs. However, with Taranto reducing the threat of Italian battleships, a raid that she'd been escort to incidentally, she was sent back to general convoy escort duty in the Atlantic, during which time she would run into the two Scharnhorsts, which decided discretion was the better part of valour when they noticed the battleship sailing with a convoy, and she also set course to engage Bismarck during that vessel's foray, but she didn't make it in time before the German ship was sunk. Japan's entry into the war put Ramillies back on the front lines again as part of the Eastern Fleet, first as part of Force B facing off against Nagumo in the Indian Ocean raid, and then taking part in the invasion of Madagascar, which removed it from Vichy French control. Although the French caused her no damage, the Imperial Japanese Navy promptly showed up, and a mini-sub mini sent in from a larger ocean-going version put a torpedo into Ramillies just ahead of her foremost turret. She survived, and sailed at reduced speed for South Africa to get patched up enough to make the voyage home. After repairs and a brief return to the Indian Ocean, the reduction of enemy battleship strength by the end of 1943, the Kriegsmarine being left with only Tirpitz and the Italians having bowed out completely, plus newer British battleships coming into service, would see Ramillies reassigned to shore bombardment duty. Seeing action in this new role at D-Day, knocking out and suppressing shore batteries, 
and wearing out her guns, which were then replaced before she headed back into the Mediterranean to support the often forgotten invasion of southern France, where she would once again prove effective against enemy shore batteries with remarkably accurate gunnery. But with few opportunities for shore bombardment in the European theatre left, and the British Pacific Fleet implementing an informal you-must-be-at-least-this-fast-to-take-part rule, Ramillies was put into reserve at the start of 1945, spending a few years as an accommodation vessel before being sold for scrap in 1948, although one of her 15-inch guns was preserved and sits outside the Imperial War Museum in Lambeth, South London, quietly menacing the residential streets of North London alongside a similar gun taken from a monitor. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.